Hey there friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. We're going to be looking at today's package of the week and we're going to start with the dairy package. So what is dairy? Dairy is essentially a script manager that you can use in your Dart projects and the way this works is dairy allows us to define essentially custom scripts that would act as an alias for commands that you would normally have to type out manually. So we've got an example of that here briefly. So rather than typing out this full command every time you need to run it in your pubspec.yaml, you're able to define an alias called build and then that alias would essentially run that for you. And then when it comes to actually running it, you will not type this, you essentially be typing this instead. You'll be typing this command instead or you can type dairy build. So of course benefits of that is it saves you from having to memorize this command in your head and having to type all of this out every single time you wish to run it. If you are from a Node.js background you're pretty much familiar with npm scripts and dairy is the npm script for Dart essentially. We're gonna be going through some examples with dairy. Firstly to install dairy we need to install it globally so we can run pub global activate dairy and once that's done we're pretty much ready to use it so all that requires is a dart project in which we can use dairy over here i've got an example of a dart project which is a simple app consisting of some web files and also there are some server side files in here and all of this is deployed to heroku there are a couple of commands that i run while working on this project so for example i use dart's web dev tool to spin up a dev server by doing web dev serve and i usually enable hot reloading so running web dev server to restart would spin up a local server and it would be serving the files from our web folder so let me just run this as an example and then it launches on localhost 8080 and that gives me this there are also other commands that I need to run in this project, such as web dev build, which will essentially bundle the files in our web directory and then it generates a build distribution folder. This build distribution folder is used by our server that we're running here in bin server.dart. This spins up a shelf static file server and it's serving files from the build directory. And also another command that we need to run is dart bin slash server dot dart which is our shelf server and of course that also shows hello heroku from the build directory all right and last but not least if we need to deploy to heroku we do git push heroku master at the minute nothing is going to happen because we've not made any changes ever since our last deployment so let's come to our pubspec.yaml file and we are going to define a script key and the first script we're going to define is our dev script and what this will do is it will run our web dev serve command so i'll save that and then to test this works we can just do dairy run dev and you can see that it reads the pubspec.yaml file and it looks up the dev command and it runs that command directly as you can see here we also need to run our build command so we can do build and then we'll say web dev build. So just to prove that works, I'll delete the build folder we currently have. And then I can do dairy run build. And that will run our web dev build command, which when that's successful, we'll see a build folder generated here. There's also the command to run our server.dart file. So let's say dev server, which is our dart bin server.dart file. So let's do that dairy run dev server okay so that runs our bin server dart file and you can access that at localhost 8080 but then this presents an interesting problem right because our server dart file relies on the existence of this build folder so we are running dart bin server dart with the assumption that this build folder exists so what happens if this build folder doesn't exist that would mean that we either need to ensure that the build folder exists or we, we do dairy run build first p 
before we do the rerun dev server. So each of these scripts can also take in a list of commands that we need to run. So one of the commands will be web dev build and then the next command will be dart running our server.dart file. So let's try that. So first it runs web dev build and then it runs our server.dart file. So if I go to localhost 8080, we see that here. We're also able to reference other scripts. So rather than doing web dev build here, I can do dollar build as such, which is a pointer to this one. So if I run that again, it still does web dev build, then it will go ahead and run that. So I'm going to kill that. Also, the commands doesn't need to be dot specific commands. You can essentially run any command you want. So the next command I'll define here is, is our deploy and this will just push to Heroku. So if I save this, and in fact, let's commit and push this to Heroku. And we do dairy run deploy. And our app has been successfully deployed. So if I visit this URL, we see that here on Heroku. For anyone interested in learning how I deployed this to Heroku, I've got a video on my Patreon page demonstrating that. There's also a written blog post that I'm going to link to in the description. So check those out. There are other features that this package provides that I haven't covered. For instance, you can pass additional commands when running your dairy scripts. Also, you can specify for a particular script a different implementation based on the operating system. So we got Windows, we got Mac here, for instance. Um, you can specify how many times to execute it and so on and so forth. To list all the scripts that you've got defined in your Derry project, you can type Derry ls, which will show all the scripts that we've defined over here. So it gives a good overview of what you have currently defined. Okay, I'm going to leave it here. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, do give this video a thumbs up. If you are not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on these updates. If you've got any questions, let me know down below and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.